Hello, everybody. Hello, Darcy. Hi, <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to Awaken Positive Power, where Darcy Mata, beautiful Darcy Mata, and myself, Jemima Godsall, <laughs> um, we talk to you regarding topics of depression, mental health awareness, and suicide prevention. Um, yes, I say every week, heavy topics, but we're trying to normalize this conversation surrounding these these feelings, these these dark feelings that um, you know everyone feels. Trying to just normalize this that no one is alone when they feel anything, good, bad, the ugly. Um, so I so I feel a little bit dis discombobulated. And this is one thing: if this is your first time, guys, I'm 100% authentic. Darcy and I are. So we fluff around, we make mistakes, we do all of that because this is about being 100% authentic. It's about just showing warts and all. And if there's tears or if there's laughter, or whatever it may be, or hiccups or faulty things with technology, that's the whole idea behind this is to be 100% authentic and nothing should stop us from having this conversation. Like nothing, it should be getting in the way. There should be no excuses, no matter how shitty or vulnerable we may feel that day. Right. Anyway, so that's why I feel, <laughs> <laughs> I feel a little bit discombobulated. Um, and it was a hard like, week. It was a hard yeah. week. And I think for everyone, you know, everyone, if, you, if you're if you watching this now, as in this coming Sunday, on Friday, it was the eclipse, the new moon, the yeah, new moon eclipse, last mm -hmm. one of the year, powerhouse in Sagittarius. And it's really knocked all of us sideways. I'm a very, very planetary person, astrological person. So I love to see how the flux and flow of the planets really do influence me. I'm a Pisces. Dun, dun, dun. So, <laughs> and you're, you're a Sagittarius. You're a Scorpio. No, Scorpio. Scorpio. Yeah. Scorpio. Sorry, both water signs. So we, yeah, we understand yeah. the deep emotional waves of the universe. But anyway, um, so Das, uh, I, I'm not really sure where we're going with this conversation today. We're just sort of talking about, it's been a tough week. Um, I fell into a deep depression. I suffer from depression anyway, but... Um, the more I'm experiencing this, I'm nearly two years sober in February. And Yay, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And I'm noticing, I've always been labelled something. Screw labels, by yeah. the way, FYI. But yeah. um, I've always had an, an issue or, you know, however society wants to put things on it, and uh, such as depression and things. But um, I have never really gone through feeling it because I was on antidepressants or I was using drugs or right. those sort of things. And now this last two years, I'm noticing it. I'm seeing this major pattern. Um, I mean, I think it was about three months ago, wasn't it, Dars? And I was feeling like I was falling apart again. And we went through this whole time. And I, yeah. oh, it was amazing. It was only like three, three, maybe four months ago, maybe even less. I don't know. But I'm noticing it. And especially now that we're on camera too, it's, it's probably the second time I've um, felt down to a big drop. But I've noticed over the last two years, this sort of wave, but I haven't really put a label to it or acknowledge it as much at this time around. Cause I went, oh, holy month. I mean, everything's good in my life. Relatively, it's pretty right. damn fine and shiny. And I'm feeling stronger and I'm going to do, doing good things. I'm moving forward. But I just, it came out of the blue, whacked me sideways. And I was like, oh, and I fell into this dark, deep hole, which is 100% for real. Like it's so hard to explain to people who don't understand depression or mental, mental health issues um it was just really shocking to me too i felt like the just the carpet ripped out from underneath me and out of out of control and you know with that out of control things i'm a suicide attempt survivor that came into my mind again um overeating wanting to reach for drugs wanting to do everything that's not good for me came a lot of, you know flooding in and i was just observing it going holy moly like what that what the, what the hell is happening like well good for you for observing it and you know i have to just comment on it a couple of things yeah. and then let's can we talk about your pattern mm. you know noticing a pattern is really important sometimes they're patterns sometimes there isn't it just comes and goes but um noticing it being witness to it without diving into it and um, you know, and grasping onto it or, or owning it. You know, it's like we have words that say my, my depression is coming back on and that's ownership. And then once we own it, we hold on to it, right? It's because it's my depression, just like um, my car, my whatever, um, my relationship. And we hold on to it. Don't wait, let me strangle it in my hold, right? <laughs> but, um, 
you know, so good for you for saying I was observing it. I was observing it come and go. You know, my whole theory about feelings is that we don't really allow ourselves to learn to feel. Mm -hmm. Maybe we are with this new generation of kids coming up, but in my generation, I know for sure I was not allowed to feel, mm -hmm. yeah. right? If I was feeling, you know, if I, it, when, if I was feeling upset, people, oh, she's grumpy. Mm -hmm. Oh, she's making faces. Mm -hmm. Oh, boo, are you sad? Are you crying? What a cry baby. I mean, we we're constantly, right? Making comments on people when they had big feelings. Um, to boys, especially, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. Oh, your baby crying, you know, stopping men from their feelings as well, that's, kids. That's what it made me end up in a lot of psych, psych boards when I was younger because my feelings were so big and unable to be handled. Well, I was just feeling. And yeah. I'm a big emotional person. And that's okay now that we are all aware of this. But it was shunned upon. It was feared. And so, hence, I was locked away and tried to give a medication to try and suffocate myself. or Bring to it down, bring it down. down where I was just freaking having feelings, you know? And it's like, not shame on anyone, but just really sad to, to think like, it's just me feeling, you know, so I totally relate to that, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I definitely know there's, there's different levels to depression. Absolutely. I mean, there's, uh, and big feelings. There's definitely chemical imbalance. There's definitely trauma, post-traumatic stress. There's all these different things that lead us to a place where our emotions are bigger than we can handle. Yep. Yep. So I'm not going to say that thing about our feelings would make it all go away. I'm not suggesting that at all. Yeah. But I do know that when I'm looking at my little kids that I work with, right? And this is one of the reasons I really like to keep working with them. I really have so many revelations about human behavior when I'm working with the little kids. So I have this little girl who's just really volatile like super volatile and it, it makes it hard for the other teachers because she's not just volatile she's really loud <laughs> and it'll come in the middle of something you know somebody has a toy that she wants and she really wanted to turn and it's just a whoa, whale I mean it's huge and so I really learned to go wow you're, <laughs> you're really disappointed and identify it for her mm -hmm. You are so disappointed. Mm -hmm. You really wanted that right now, mm -hmm. you know, without criticizing her. Yeah, yeah. I said, that makes you really upset. She's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay. So can we take some deep breaths? And she knows she's learning now to give herself some emotional self-control. Oh, but one of the things she's learning is that no one is shaming her for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say, because she wasn't getting banished for feeling, feel, having big feelings, but now it's she's they're being honored, so she doesn't need to be as extreme, or she understands that she's still being heard no matter big, emotional, or small, so there's no need to be so out there. That's beautiful. I mean, that's exactly what it's all about, like people right. normalizing anything we're going through, anything and everything. There's right. nothing right or bad or, like, it's just, it just... Ah, oh, it drives me crazy. Yeah, you know, people learn how to lie that way so they don't have to be honest about their feelings. You know, that's another big thing. Yeah. So learn to lie to others and then they end up learning to lie to themselves, yeah. you know, yeah. about what their feelings are. And then later that be can come into, um, you know, behavior issues, mm -hmm. you know, with eating or smoking or yeah, that's et cetera, awesome. et cetera. Yeah, drugs came into mind because was, and then the lying on top of the, those taking drugs to to because I was could never be true to myself because it was being shunned or I was already too big or too loud or so what who cares but then I'm sort of been lying about taking drugs so it was a big mess big right mess. and that fear that that fear that's there like oh someone's gonna make fun of me or I'm gonna be in trouble or you know I don't want to say anything and look stupid those are all fears and fear is really like that underlying factor to most of our behavior yeah. Yeah. you know so I'm sorry you had such a hard week with it 
but yeah. I'm sorry for everyone too. Like I know that it's even though in the moment it doesn't matter. <laughs> you like you just feel like woe is me, but and that's wonderful. Like woe is was me, but um, yeah, I think also that does. I really think I've learned to because I was like the little girl, very much not an observer, um, very much just reacting, reacting and stuff. And to be able to now to granted I'm I'm in a different place with my healing, but I think through the plant medicine ceremonies, one of the main thing one of the main lessons we learn is to be an observer, to observe what you go through in your journey, um, to them to be able to take it out and learn from it from an, from an outside perspective looking within. Mm -hmm. And that's really something that I've taken away from this last time. It, it, and for me being such a flighty, emotional, <clears throat> ungrounded person sometimes, majority mm -hmm. of the time, which I love and I own, I love it. <laughs> but, um, but in that moment, <laughs> feeling depression out of control or suicidal thoughts coming again, being able to be, witness it rather than to, to become it was a lot, it helped me a lot this week. It helped me a lot to still be able to feel it and go through it, but know that I don't have to become the suicide attempt. I don't have to become, granted I over ate and I did a few things which are still dis destructive to my, to my well being, but not half as bad as I used to because mm -hmm. I was just witnessing that this too shall pass. I mean, I wrote that in my blog, all these sleazy comments that, <laughs> that are overused, but they're just damn true. You know, it's just, that's why they're overused is because they're just true. This too shall freaking pass, you know? Right, right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a really good statement about the whole overeating thing, that consumption, yes. <clears throat> you know, to try to stop the feelings, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or to stop us from saying what we need to say, right? I do the emotional eating oftentimes and I have to really observe it yeah. and then it, once I observe my emotional eating then I can let it go yeah. you know <clears throat> but isn't that um, usually after you've eaten the pack of chips <laughs> well you know I have to say um, no I'm a little bit lucky in that I can't eat that many potato chips because they kind of gross me out after a bit okay, good. so where do I overeat I overeat with things like ice cream and then I will, if it's in the evening, I give myself an excuse to pour brandy over my ice cream. Oh, so, yeah, I have this kind of like, and it's like this little, you know, lovely little dessert. Yeah. dessert um, yeah. So I'll do stuff like that. That's not really overeating, but that's kind of indulging unnecessarily. Yeah. Especially you don't drink, so, well, you rarely drink. So, you know, it's like, yeah, I can understand why that would be sort of stepping out your comfort zone and doing something that you don't normally do that you know is is worse for you than better <laughs> and if i'm doing that in the evening chances are i will have had cookies earlier in the day oh, yeah. or can't you know sweets earlier in the day you know two here one here two here one here at different times of the day um so uh yeah so i'm on like that sweet train i go on that sweet train thing um and then i have to forgive myself and say okay chill pill <laughs> don't, you don't have to sit here and berate yourself for that that's all right um but that's, that's let's one see. thing i'm finding challenging to us is the self-forgiveness i may have been able to be mm. witness to, to the to my depression uh, it, granted it was a short short set depression it was a week but it was full on i'm just stepping out of it like now um and it was very dark and very, very, very negative, very, very harmful. Um, the, the, the battle in my head was so mean and so just really nasty, like ugly, ugly, beating myself up, like to the point where it's like a fist against the eye again and again. I know that sorry sounds really graphic, guys. No, no, I get it. Down, it, but it felt that aggressive within myself. Yes. And able to now look at myself and I really I want to I can just ignore it and keep moving but that's what I've continued to do and nothing seems to change so I'm trying to sit and look at myself and say sorry but I can't I just feel like oh, maybe it's a little too early because I still hear the, the voice come in and go you idiot <laughs> and I say, no I won't not right now but I don't understand why it's the the Oh, I don't understand why that apology to thyself is one of the hardest things in this healing process. Well, I think, you know, underneath it all, we have to find self-love, right? Mm -hmm. And, and you know, you've had some friends, our guests in the past who said, well, if you don't love yourself, it's really hard to find self-love. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, I mean, that's really, really what it's all about is yeah 
trying to find that hook of self-love when you've been thinking that you're, you know, to be thrown out with the trash for so long, you know, you've got to change that narrative in your brain that says, okay, let's, let me just look at this a second and say to myself, I am not perfect. So who is perfect? No. Who, who is judging me? Yeah. Who, who is judging me? Yeah. And then ask yourself, like, who is that voice? Who is that mean voice in you going, ah, you big dumb, blah, blah, blah. You make mistakes all the time. You can't make a good decision if you tried. So don't even try. You're just going to screw it up anyway. You okay, don't think so. Sorry, <laughs> you know, all that, is that right? Yeah, I mean, that's what mine sounds like. You're going to screw it up anyway. You're going to make some major decision. And boy, is that going to go south quickly? You know, you know, all that kind of deserving stuff. And, and I have to ask myself, whose voice is that? Yeah. Where did I learn that? Can yeah, I, like if I can't identify it as someone from my past, can I turn it into some creature? some part of me, something separate. You know, we used to have those angel devil images, yep. but can we turn it into the beast part of me? And can we look at it, the beast part of us as its own individual creation? And then we have to look at that evil beastie with compassion so, I mean, literally turn it into something, those, those nasty voice that voices or voice that comes in you say, who are you? Yeah. Who I mean, are you? Yeah. It's, I think it's just the, I think it's maybe just really early. I think it's going to be a long process because it's been so it is. out of whack, out of my body, mind, and spirit. And it's been there so long that I want instant gratification. Like society yeah. teaches, that's not going to happen that way, is it? And yeah, you have I've, to practice so, that. Yeah, and I feel like I'm so far on the healing path that but I'm really not. I'm only like 20 months. So it's, I've got to be realistic and go, you know, just stop, Jemima, and remember that time in this case is an issue. You know, time is short lived right now. And but even bigger than that, what you just said is that exact step. Jemima, it's only been 20 months. You're mm -hmm. already on the path to forgiving yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the first one you've done. Jemima. You've only been 20 months. Hey, yeah. give yourself a break. You're just starting on this journey. It's going to take a while. Boom. That's your first forgiveness step. That's beautiful. What a lot of compassion you just gave yourself right there. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like it. You know, I thought it would be much more. Oh yeah. More that's fun. a big one. Giving yourself time. That's yeah. a big one. You just, that's huge. What you just gave yourself is your first <clears throat> beautiful glimpse into self-love and compassion and that goes into forgiveness that's absolutely forgiveness if you were your friend instead of you and yeah. your friend's like blah, 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 and you'd be like whoa chill pill you're yeah. just 20 minutes 20 yeah. minutes is 20 days is 20 months is yeah. you know give yourself a a second to breathe and process so good for you you're doing it you're absolutely mm -hmm. doing it and you can really take that one and write it down and say, yeah, I did forgive myself today or yesterday or this week because I realized it's, it's so soon. And that's a, a great piece of um, understanding. Well, thank you. But, yeah, um, you're welcome. But <laughs> but also, what I'm really shocked about this week was and once again, maybe it's because the recovery is early, but and I can really feel, I like genuinely feel, I can really hear, and how um, why I didn't why I did take drugs if that came in like hell yeah anyone want to escape that abuse you know what I mean like damn I'm out of here you know, right. um, but how like where does that cruelty come from like I'm not a cruel person I love everything and everyone and even myself occasionally you know like um, so much. And my parents, I didn't come from a background which was horrendous. I did have a, a bad marriage, but it wasn't to the point like that every day or at each other every day. 
and it's just horrifying like and I, I mean, I don't watch TV anymore for like two years now. I haven't watched television at all. So I know, I do know there was a lot of influence, like Lifetime films and shit like that. But I <laughs> also enough to be in the acting industry to know, mm-hmm. yes, to separate reality from television, observe the observe scripts differently, you know, the scripts differently than an, an average person. So it freaking freaks me out. Like yeah. I remember just my lover just going like, Chris, I don't think you'll get this. Like I, it's not going to make sense. I can't, it's loud. And it's scratching and it's mean and wants to hurt me. And I'm just have to just sit with this and I can't hear it's yeah. going to be okay. Cause right now it's freaking not, it's not at all. And it's, I don't know how to stop this. And I felt kind of a little scared because or maybe it was just like, cause I was one of the first times I'm hearing again, you know, this is just like crazy, you know, crazy. You know, crazy. Jemai, we, we all have a shadow self yeah. Yeah. and you're learning to, meet you're meeting your shadow self and you know it's really important to own our shadow self our shadow self is different everybody's shadow is different we can't all be loving wonderful people if we don't acknowledge that we have a shadow self and if yours is particularly mean and harsh and cruel and you you gotta acknowledge that it needs to be seen and heard not maybe by everybody else but definitely by you yeah, yeah, because it's a part of you. And if you suppress it and deny it and ho- hope and wish that it wasn't there, it's just going to find its little way out until its big way comes out. Right. I mean, our, Carl Jung wrote about the shadow self. So, you know, do a little research into the shadow self and why it's so important to acknowledge it, you know, that our shadow our ugliness we if we acknowledge it and then we can give it compassion i have a story to read to you um we have to acknowledge that shadow self yeah well i know that um, that shadow self is a lot of power yeah totally and i mean and that's the you can't have the light without the dark you can't have the dark without the light so i and i respect that my light is so big that my dark has to be will most likely be just as big in one way to enable me to see the extremes of of human human beings and have compassion for either because i would I, I i would have compassion for someone going through this um but it's just hard to own it but i know in ceremony recently my last one was real i think i told you this dust was really very challenging because i sat with this I thought it was my external, the stalkers in California and the trauma of being pulled, the gun pulled on me and all this drama and mm-hmm. negative male energies. I sat with my rapist. I sat with this male, male gang and I thought it was an external energy that was coming through me and it was a mean and aggressive, but kind of the same voice that I realized just recently this week that, that my inner shadow. And then what, I, I was scared at the end of the ceremony because I was thinking, my God, I felt like I was the, the energy around me, the insecure, paranoid energy around me again. And my, my the shaman said, what about looking at as if that was you, that's, that was you protecting, that's the energy that was protecting you from this, this these stalkers. Yeah. And that's how dark and evil it was and had to become to survive. Granted, I stepped in and I was like, holy moly, that was such a different perspective to look at and it saved me, but it was such a dark, like I thought, my God, your moment, how, how bad a situation, and how to 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 to, to, say, to rescue myself, to to come face to face and be just as dark as these people who are whose innate nature is evil. Um, and it took me a long time, guys, for me to ever say that. So just I'm not one to just throw out throat that people are evil out there because I don't think anyone's evil. But this is right. just this. There's sometimes there is an entity that is just there for this lesson. Um, but to sort of find myself match it Whew. and i know that maybe that's where it's why it's still so aggressive and loud yeah anyway why, why is it still so aggressive and loud because you haven't acknowledged because, because it's so uh, it's so aggressive and so loud because it's just coming out of the situation i'm just understanding now that that is me not external um, that is my shadow self and it's 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 kind of hard to want to befriend it it's kind of hard for me to go it's okay and that's what I'm challenged with going my god I I find shame in that part of myself but I can't be shamed because of me I can't be shameful of, you also of- don't have to befriend it okay you but don't I have, have to, to 
I have to honor that part of myself. I mean, to, yeah, to have you to have to just it. acknowledge it and say, okay, I see that. I see that potential. I look at it. I understand its destructive quality. I understand its power. Um, I understand that its power could be really used for good when I need it. You know, um, I'm going to just make peace with the fact that it's there. And, and, when I need and give myself compassion for the fact that I, I have all these different levels inside of me, right? I have all of these different things inside of me and I, I don't have to make that my friend, but damn, if I need it, <laughs> watch out people. No, seriously, guys, don't worry. I would never, ever. No, ever. I get it. Yeah, it's not necessary for anyone to ever, ever experience or hear it or go through it, but I, I like that it did rescue me through with those that dark gang that did terrorize me like i mean right. that was saved my life you know in, in a really twisted way <laughs> and i didn't even know i didn't even know that i was using that energy because i was in my drug my drug blindness going oh and freaking out but it, right. obviously there was the energy i was giving off that was challenging them to to back them off but they weren't gonna they were gonna they weren't gonna they weren't gonna win you know that i either had was as they said you're gonna leave in a body bag you're gonna leave so I left, but I, I left, you know, with my, my still in one piece, you know, and they didn't dare hurt me again. But yeah, so just, you know, there's a whole theory that says that when we don't honor certain aspects of ourselves, we draw things into us to yeah. make us deal with it, you know? And so, you know, your drug use definitely. would definitely draw energies towards you. And, um, you know, thank goodness you had a reserve within you to deal with it and not be overwhelmed by it. You know, I mean, that reserve in you had some life preserving instincts on a lot of different levels and a lot of different instances. So and it was it was also the fact that I knew that I wanted to stop drugs. I didn't know how to because I thought I'm going to get either arrested or I lose my job. I didn't know how to stop this cycle that I was in. And it was kind of weird because I was so, so frustrated. I don't know how I've got myself so deep into this. How will I ever stop it? And the lies for everyone. I couldn't just say, can someone help me? I lost you. You froze. Oh, ding. Don't you just hate that? <laughs> they freeze. <laughs> oh, I have to chat with her. You froze. See if she got that. Not that I can spell. Um, so I'm not sure if it's me or her that froze, but my instinct tells me that it's her. So I'm here. There you are. I'm here. There you are. I know. I don't know why it froze. But anyway, just saying it was a miracle that it happened, you know, in a twisted way, you know. Yes, it is a miracle that it happened. Absolutely, it is. They might say, um, me out of drugs. I mean, there's no other way I would have ever gotten out of it, ever. Just wouldn't have. I would have been dead, definitely. Yeah. And so you are here for a reason. Yep. I mean, we all are. We all are. But I think that you're really, you know, walking into your stride to honor your reason of survival. That's why you're here. And so you're here to help me. Yay, Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> you're here to help me. You're yeah, me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I've, I've got your back I'm, all the time, but I know that you. Um, I don't know. You've always been a mentor of mine, and and you have experience in different ways, and you've got really good insight into people, and you know, just your heartfelt. So that's why I really respect your your words. Thanks, Jemima. I'll tell you right now. I decided to do. Are you frozen again? Oh, damn. She's frozen again. <laughs> Thanks, Jemima. Frozen. And we're not talking about the movie. Um, well, just to let you know, I decided to go back into therapy myself and to relook at my own patterns. So I'm not just sitting here yakking about everybody else's stuff. I definitely take the opportunity occasionally to go back to therapy myself and get an objective observer on my own behavior so that I can move forward through my own shadow self because we all have one. I lost her completely. So um, I'm still recording. So I just wanted you to know that, yeah, I do my own 
therapy. I have a really wonderful therapist I started working with. Um, and it's really helping me break my own patterns so I don't do all that emotional eating also. Oh, there she is, she's back, almost. So I do <clears throat> wanna read something to you. You're muted, unmute yourself. Oh, she's Hi, Hi doll. So I'm going to read something to you. Sorry. Yeah, you got some kind of weird connection issue going on. So um, I, I hear you. Donna. You're, you're so not. Try. The eclipse. You're so not. Here. I, I'm here. Turn off your video. I'm okay, so this is what we're going to do because her voice thing is not coming through. I have a story I wanted to read and it's, you can, it's just a short story and it's in the medicine cards by, uh, some, look at how beat up my book is. It's so funny. Jamie, Sam's. Jamie Sams and David Carson, S-A-M-S and C-A-R-S-O-N. Jamie Sams and David Carson. And they are, they're like oracle cards, if you want to call it. They're animals. They're it's all animals. But having my conversation with Jemima reminded me of a story in here. And I just want to read it. Um, because I feel like it's very pertinent to our conversation. Yeah, I lost her again. So I'm just going to, am I still recording? Yes, okay. So I'm going to just read this little because I think the world is full of preschoolers, actually. This is a beautiful story for us as adults and it's a, a great lesson. Okay, so hi, Jemima. Hi, Jemima. Hi, I'm gonna keep my screen off. Great. I think this is really pertinent. I'm reading the animal medicine cards and I'm gonna read the story of deer, okay? So, so deer. Yeah, so here we go. Deer is about gentleness. And so here's the story. <clears throat> I love this, okay. One day, Fawn heard great spirit calling to her from the top of sacred mountain. Fawn immediately started up the trail. She didn't know that a horrible demon guarded the way to great spirit's lodge. The demon was trying to keep all the beings of creation from connecting with great spirit. He wanted all of great spirit's creatures to feel that great spirit didn't want to be disturbed. This would make demon feel very powerful and capable of causing them to fear him. <clears throat> Fawn, however, was not at all frightened when she came upon the demon. This was curious, as the demon was the archetype of all the ugly monsters that have ever been. The demon breathed fire and smoke and made disgusting sounds to frighten Fawn. Any normal creature? would have fled or died on the spot from fright. Fawn, however, said gently to the demon, please let me pass. I'm on the way to see great spirit. <clears throat> oh, that made me really emotional. Fawn's eyes were filled with love and compassion for this oversized bully of a demon. The demon was astounded by Fawn's lack of fear. No matter how hard he tried, he could not frighten Fawn because her love had penetrated his hardened, ugly heart. Much to demon's dismay, his rock hard heart began to melt and his body shrank to the size of a walnut. Fawn's persistent love and gentleness had caused the meltdown of the demon. Due to this gentleness and caring that Fawn embodied, the pathway is now clear for all of Great Spirit's children to reach Sacred Mountain 
without having to feel the demons of fear blocking their way. Fear, right? That's the whole thing. Dear teaches us to use the power of gentleness to touch the hearts and minds of wounded beings who are trying to keep us from sacred mountain. Like the dappling of the fawn's coat, both the light and the dark may be loved to create gentleness and safety for those who are seeking peace. If deer has come to your cards today, so this is if we had pulled a card, you are being asked to find the gentleness of spirit that heals all wounds. Find the gentleness of spirit that heals all wounds. Stop pushing so hard to get others to change or to get yourself to change and love as they are. Apply gentleness to your present situation and become like the summer breeze, warm and caring. This is your tool for surviving the present dilemma you are facing. Connect with Sacred Mountain, your centering place of serenity, and Great Spirit will guide you. I love that. So I look at those, at that story when I feel that I am being too hard on myself. And I ask that part of me, that gentle part of me, that would see maybe a hurt animal in the road or maybe... Um, you know, somebody struggling to carry big boxes through the door at the grocery store. Can I help you? Right. Well, you, we all have gentleness in us somewhere. And now we just need to turn it on ourselves. So maybe that image is something you can take with you today as you give your demons a little bit of compassion. Thank you. You're amazing. So are you. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think we might have to cut a little short today because um, my oh. internet sucks. I'm sorry. Oh, that's it. We're not cut short. That's a perfect thing. That's why I decided to read that story thank since you. I lost you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're amazing, Darcy. And happy uh, full moon, no, new moon eclipse in Sagittarius. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone else. Yeah. Let, it, let, it go, let, let it go, let it go, let it go. Yep, and um, we'll see you next week. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. See you next Sunday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. <laughs> She's lost. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you for coming and listening today. So I think she can stop recording now. I'll tell her. We certainly are authentic, aren't we? Let's see. I just typed it into her. Stop recording. Otherwise, it's just me hanging out, talking about deers and monsters. We'll see if she can do it. I hope you guys like that. <clears throat> yeah, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Please send us some messages. We'd love to hear any questions you have. If you want us to pull a card for you, if you have something that's bothering you, if you have a theme, if you have a theme that you want us to talk about, we would love to talk about your theme. Um, like if you have an uh, an obstacle, something that's really hurting. We're here to, to talk about that, make that conversation happen for more than just ourselves and our own stuff. We want to bring everybody along. Um, so yeah, we look forward to, we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, bye-bye.